How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. This video is going to be an overview and demonstration of this Cherry one ton mini excavator. So a little backstory on these, this one ton excavator and uh, a lot of these one ton excavators you're going to see in the market. Um, they're all made by a handful of manufacturers over in China. Um, I don't know exactly the number specifically how many are over there but there's a handful of them that make essentially the same style of excavator. So it's more of this kind of squared off body style. It has a Briggs and Stratton 13.5 horsepower motor and uh, it's a gear pump and the um, valve bank, the control arms, uh, the control levers I should say, are hooked right to the uh, valve bank. So it's not a pilot control setup. So this provides a very simple machine and a very straightforward uh, machine to work on. Now the name Cherry on it, it's Cherry Industrial is what it is and they're kind of like uh, some of the other companies out there I want to say there's like Groundhog, uh, High Top, um, AKG is another one and these are just different names these manufacturers uh, have set up over here in the United States and they're the, I think worldwide too but they're these Chinese companies and they import these machines over and they if, if, that's how you get them you can buy them either from the factory uh, distributor that they have so I think AKG is over in Chicago I'm not sure where Cherry is out of I think they're out of Texas you can also buy them at machinery auctions and the last option would be you could import them so you go on a website like Alibaba and it puts you in contact with the manufacturer and you can buy however many you want. They will ship it over in a container ship. You have to arrange at the port where it's being shipped to the uh, shipping papers. You have to work with the um, uh, customs for the tariffs. There's a whole bunch of processes you have to go through. It's rather complicated. Um, that's where having a broker comes in that makes it a lot simpler of a process. Um, and that process is usually more expensive too. So when you think of getting these things over here, buying in bulk is the cheapest way to go. So uh, the companies that will buy you know, two dozen of these machines, they get a break on the shipping cost. They also get a break on the purchase price from the factory. So you can get them over here cheaper and it's uh, versus you buying one machine from the factory and having it shipped over here. So looking locally in your country is probably going to be, uh, I'd start there first before looking to import it directly from China. Just because uh, cost savings wise, you'll probably save some money. Now price on these things. The price of these I've seen go all over the market. Uh, the highest price I saw was, I want to say $8,500. Um, and it was an auction and then you'll see them go all the way down into the low sixes uh, high fives and it's it just kind of a it's like all over the board too if you're in an area where they have really saturated the market with these things uh, prices are gonna be less if you're in an area where these things are hard to come by you're gonna pay more for them uh, just you know supply and demand type deal so uh, also keep in mind when you look at the auction, you see a price, you'll say, hey, this thing went for, you know, $4,500. Well, then you have to add on, there's a ten, usually a 10% buyer's fee, there's taxes on top of that, it has sales tax on top of that. So the fees really do add up and eat into the total price of these things. So uh, just remember that sticker price you see on these auctions, uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. So you need to factor that in and look into buy one of these. So performance, uh, how do I like it? Would I buy it again? Is it a good machine? Uh, yes to all those questions. Um, like I said, these are all kind of the same style of machine. Uh, this kind of this boxy steel chassis uh, style here. There are some of them that have like a fiberglass hood that your seat sits on that flips up. Um, they're not as common right now uh, during the recording of this video. This is in November of 2023. Um, so this style right here, 
it's all steel construction and it's a very simple design you have a motor in there that runs a gear pump uh, you have a small hydraulic tank and it uh, feeds a valve bank that your levers are hooked up to and those actuate either your tracks your blade or your bucket uh, the smoothness of it it's not smooth I'll just I'll just be frank with you it is such a small machine that it is going to throw you around and it is going to jar you around it's, it's not a smooth operating machine because of its size also that has to do with the fact that it doesn't have pilot controls what is a pilot control you might be asking the simplest way to describe a pilot control is a the lever that you pull to move that arm instead of being directly hooked up to the valve that opens and closes to allow hydraulic fluid to flow to that hydraulic cylinder there is a separate set of hydraulic cylinder or hoses that are underneath that valve that then go and turn a um, basically open and close the bigger hydraulic uh, valve. Think of it like a brake system in a car. You have the master and slave cylinder. Uh, it's a similar concept to that. Uh, there's a little bit more to it. Some of them have to have power from the motor to work, but uh, that's the general concept. Uh, master and slave cylinder. So what this uh, what that provides is that makes it a little bit smoother operation with these. So that's that's pilot control in a nutshell. Uh, the stuff that you see me right doing right there, those levers I'm pulling, it's like a log splitter. When you move that lever, you're, that's connected right to that valve. And it's not as smooth. It's more of an on-off style valve. There's not a whole lot of feathering it. There's not a whole lot of, like, in between. It's either all on or all off. So the way you get around that and make it a little bit smoother operation, you can be, uh, you can take it, turn down the RPM, so run about half throttle. But the issue with that is when you're running one of these small gas motors at half throttle, you run the risk of uh, gumming up the uh, spark plug. So you'll get carbon buildup in that spark plug, and it will make it hard to start and very rough running because you get this uh, this char looks like charcoal. It's really black uh, build up on that spark plug. So what you want to do is run the engine RPM if you're getting that. You want to run the engine RPM at a higher RPM that will burn off that carbon and keep it hotter. So that's one of the downfalls running at a lower RPM, but lower RPM does make it a smoother operation. Um, so yeah, operating it. It's a bumpy ride, and you can see here in the video, I'm just getting kind of thrown around here. Uh, I am trying to dig out this stump here, so we're in the middle of this orchard. Uh, we're digging out for a pond here, and this is a, I think, a hazelnut tree. I actually forget what type of tree it was, but it's in there pretty good, so I'm just trying to dig out the root system of it, and I'm eventually going to give up and we're just going to grab the tractor, because that's a lot more efficient, and we just want to get the job done. So. This little excavator, it's good for digging in dirt. It is not good for digging up stumps. Will it do it? Given enough time, yes. Uh, will it do it effectively? Uh, that's, that's a little bit of a stretch. You're going to beat yourself up doing it. So if you have plenty of time, you know that you can do it. But if you just need to get the job done, it's not the machine for you. Uh, as far as digging in the dirt here and moving dirt, uh, it does a really good job. Uh, it's got plenty of power and for its size it is fairly well weighted so you're not, I didn't feel tippy over at all when I was digging in the dirt trying to, you know, just moving dirt uh, at full extension so we'll have some better shots of that coming up here but for just being able to do basic trenching uh, this thing really shines. Now why would you choose to buy one of these over buying, say, a Kubota, John Deere, Yanmar, a, a true name brand machine? Uh, the reason you would look at what, buying one of these is if you want the upfront cost savings, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money up front. But when you do that, you're realizing that you're sacrificing something. So you're sacrificing not having dealer support. You're not going to have a warranty on this. 
So when you buy the machine with that warranty, it's not just a warranty that's thrown on there. You're paying for that. That's what, you know, that huge price tag comes with it. Where this thing, you're not getting that warranty. Uh, some places might advertise it with a warranty. Um, all the forms that I've read online, people have not had very good luck uh, collecting it on that warranty and getting repairs done with it. So just know that when you buy this, you're going to have to take it to a mechanic or you're going to have to be the mechanic that fixes it if something goes wrong. So what are going wrong with these machines? What do people report going wrong? Uh, surprisingly, the biggest thing that goes wrong with these things that I'm reading on these forms and stuff online is the motor blows up or seizes up is probably a better term for it. Now, why would a good Briggs & Stratton motor seize up? The most common cause that I'm seeing out there is that people are not changing oil at the five hour mark. So these Briggs & Strattons, they are, have what's called break-in oil. So it's a thinner oil inside the motor and that oil is designed to suspend and capture all the particles of that break-in process. So you have this brand new motor and as it's breaking in, as that cylinder is breaking in, the um, seals are breaking in, uh, just the movement of that motor, you're going to get little metal flakes that come off of it. Just part of the process of getting that motor settled in. And those metal flakes are going to fall on that oil. Well, these small, tiny motors, these 13 and a half horsepower and under motors, they don't have an oil filter. So there's nothing to catch that oil. So it's just suspended in the oil and it's getting sloshed around. And if it's not changed out, then you have essentially a lapping compound. So you have oil with a grit in there that is going to wear away parts and do damage to the internal part, uh, components of your motor. So at that five hour mark, you drain that oil, put new oil in. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to change that out at the 10 hour mark and you know just do one more flush just to make sure you're getting all those little particles out of there because of that lack of an oil filter. Uh, you want clean oil, you don't want to have sediment in there, you don't want to have metal flakes just floating around because that is not going to be good for the longevity of the engine. So that's the biggest complaint that I'm reading online with these things that people have is they, the motors are seizing up, people aren't doing the oil changes, or they're not checking to make sure that they have oil. Uh, you could have one of the, there's two oil fill caps, or, or there, it's a combination of an oil check and a uh, oil fill hole so the dipstick's built into the cap and if say one of those rattles loose because it's a small motor it makes a lot of vibration uh, you could lose your oil out of it and seize up your motor so check your oil check your oil fill caps make sure they're tight and make sure that has oil in there so just that simple maintenance process it gets overlooked and people uh, they seize up a motor uh, other issues with these things, uh, loose nuts and bolts. So a lot of the bolts on these things do not have washers or they do not have a locking washer. And as you're running this machine, the vibration from the motor, just the general jerkiness of the machine, you are going to have nuts and bolts come loose. It's just the nature of this beast. So you have to go through with a wrench or a ratchet and just make sure things are tightened down. You have to do that every few hours. Um, so that's just something to be fully aware of when you buy one of these things, that tightening nuts and bolts is just part of the part of the joys of owning one of these things. Uh, what else on these? That's pretty much, that's the big stuff. Loose nuts and bolts and keeping that motor, you know, properly oiled and going through the break-in process. Uh, one of the modifications people do do with these things is they put cooling fans on the vents on the side there. So as I swing this, uh, the body of this excavator around, you'll see these vents on the side there. And people will put a 12 volt fan on the inside there. They'll usually zip tie it on there. I, I did a video on how to build the wiring harness for it. And putting a fan in there that sucks cool air from the outside and blows it in on the engine allows that motor to stay cooler. So. In the winter months, it's not such a big deal, but if you're running this in the summer, you have that motor with that hot exhaust sitting inside a steel box. And the lid of that steel box happens to be where your seat is mounted to. So 
your backside is going to get very warm very fast. And if you don't have any cooling ability, uh, it's just going to bake. That motor's going to get hot. And if you have one of the excavators that has a hydraulic tank next to the motor, which a lot of these do, you're going to heat up that hydraulic oil. Well, that hydraulic oil is being pumped through these cylinders, and those cylinders have, at the glands, rubber O-rings. When you start pumping in a couple hundred degree oil, 200 degree oil, that's going to wear down that uh, rubber seals and prematurely wear out those hydraulic cylinders. So cooling these things is important. So if you're running this in a hot environment, go on Amazon, eBay, you know, wherever you like to buy it. Find some 7 inch cooling fans and zip tie it to the side, hook it up to a switch or run it to the battery switch, wire it in, and that way you have that cooling ability for when this thing's running so you're not overheating the machine. So that's really the biggest modification that I'd recommend with these. Other than that, it's all, you know, what's going to make your life more comfortable. Putting a, you know, more comfortable seat on there. Um, putting on extra work lights if you're working at dark, and then whatever attachments you want for these things. So there is, I think, I want to say like 12 different attachments that you can get for these things. You can get augers, different buckets, root rakes, you can get a clamshell for it. Um, there's just a handful of different things you can mount on this. And this is where the real fun begins with these things. If you're somebody who likes to do fabrication or likes to build things or modify things, uh, this is just a hydraulic pump with an arm on it. So you can anything you can attach that arm that does that can run off the hydraulic flow and pressure that that hydraulic pump will put out, you can run on this. So if you wanted to hook up a log splitter with this, you could have a log splitter on the end of this boom and in theory, be able to split all the wood in a pile and not have to get off the seat of this thing. You just take that boom, set the log splitter on the end of that boom over a piece of wood, split it, move on to the next one. So uh, that's where the kind of the fun of these things, I guess, comes in, is if you're somebody who likes to tinker with things and build, build accessories, you can build a lot of things for these. So yeah, the hydro, that uh, thumb that you see on this one, that's one that I fabricated. So it didn't come with one from the factory, so I just took some scrap steel and I built a thumb for it. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities with these things. So it's kind of a blank canvas or a half painted canvas, if you will, that you can do whatever you wish to it. So hopefully this just gives you guys a little bit of insight into these things and kind of idea of what you're getting into if you're looking at buying one of these. Um, as far as how long will they run or how, how many hours you expect out of it, I would not be surprised to see several thousand hours out of these. Really the wear points on these things are going to be your tracks. So your tracks are eventually going to wear out. It's just, you know, they're rubber that's uh, steel braided, but tracks do wear out. Um, if you don't keep it greased, then the bushings um, and the pins where the, each joint is, those will probably get loose too. So those are common wear points on the excavator. If you do the maintenance on your engine and you keep it cool, then that motor should last forever. I mean, we've all seen those Briggs and Stratton motors that you know have gone for thousands of hours. So no reason to think that this one won't. Uh, there's just not a lot of things that can go wrong with these because it's just a simple design. And that's the beauty of this. If you are somebody who feels comfortable fixing simple things like old trucks, old cars, uh, things that don't have a lot of electronics or fancy emissions, then this is just like that. So it's, uh, it's easy to work on. And uh, for a homeowner, for a contractor, for somebody that's landscaping, these things are perfect because they're small enough that they can drive down a sidewalk through a gate and get to a spot where bigger machines can't get to. Um, so yeah, hopefully this guy's gives you guys some uh, insight to these things. And the rest of this video is just going to be me digging with it so you can kind of get an idea of what this thing will do. Um, and we're just going to finish out this uh, pond here. There's going to be a before and after photo of it. I didn't. Ha my camera actually died. I, the battery died on it. 
toward the end of this video, so I wasn't able to finish the whole thing, but you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what we ended up here with. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys get something out of this video. Uh, hopefully you get some value out of this, and uh, thank you guys for watching.